So in this little box right here, um, we know that energy is conserved. You don't get something for nothing. And in this case, because it's a rate of change problem, it's power that's conserved. The power on the primary side equals the power on the secondary side. Uh, by the way, this is not exactly true. There will be some losses, some resistance, some problems, but hey, what the heck, um, this is an ideal situation, just like with the ideal simple machines. And that means that the product of voltage one and current one is equal to the product of voltage two and current two. So in our step up transformer example, we had an increase in voltage, so we're going to have a decrease in current. So let's do a quick little calculation here off to the side. Um, we had 180 volts on our secondary side for our example that's depicted here and 10 ohms. So that means that um, uh, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance 180 divided by 10. That's going to be 18 amps. So over here we have 180 volts and 18 amps. And that's going to equal 120 volts times I1. So I1, <laughs> that's a great way to do that. I1 equals, um, ooh, I need a calculator for that. Uh, uh, 180 times 18 over 120. 180 times 18 divided by 20. Oh, no, not one, not 20. Times 18 divided by 120. 27. We're going to have to provide 27 amps on the primary side in order to get 18 amps on the secondary side. So the current is decreasing, the voltage is increasing. Overall, the power stays the same. So we could come up with another um, example, and that would be that, that uh, the current on one times the number of turns on one equals the current on two times the number of turns. This could be a secondary transformer equation, but I prefer just to solve for the current from the voltages. There's one more little thing about transformers other than um, that, and that is that there is an associated resistance on the primary side, even though no resistor is depicted. There's a resistor depicted on the secondary side, but there is no resistor depicted here. However, the operation of the transformer acts like a resistance on the primary side, and we can figure out how much that is because we now know the voltage and the current. So the resistance on the primary side is going to be the voltage on the primary side divided by the current on the primary side. In this case, that's 120 divided by 27. And again, with the calculator, 120 divided by 27 equals 4.44. So there is a mysterious 4.4 ohm resistance on the primary side just because of the 10 ohms that's on the secondary side. So let's uh, review here on transformers. A transformer is created by taking one set of windings on some sort of iron core uh, to generate an, a magnetic field and another set of windings to pick it up. If the number of wraps is different, you're going to get a turns ratio, which will tell you whether it's a step up or a step down transformer. The transformer equation says that the, the voltage steps up or steps down in proportion to the ratio of the number of windings and the current does the opposite. Now in practice no one would build a transformer like this. There is too much of a chance that some of your magnetic field will actually leak out of the iron. So in practice most transformers are built coaxially. Uh, that is to say that we would have one piece of iron and we would either wrap the primary around the top and the secondary Let's have that go behind and then come across this way. There's dotted lines back here. Um, so the primary would be up top and the secondary would be on the bottom. That way the magnetic field doesn't have far to go. Or you might even wrap these things over each other. You might take a piece of iron and you could, uh, you could wrap the primary wraps around. And then with a different color wire you could wrap the secondary coils on top of them so the magnetic field really is shared between them another design that i've seen in old-fashioned transformers is for there to be a shape like a belt buckle and the windings for both the primary and the secondary go around the middle of the belt buckle those are the primary windings and these are the secondary windings. 
And the purpose of the rest of this belt buckle shape is to channel all of the magnetic field. Because remember, a solenoid makes a magnetic field that's very strong in the center, but it still has to connect around the outside with this butterfly type shape. So we are giving uh, iron to all of the parts of the magnetic field. This is a really excellent design for a transformer. Um, another excellent design, of course, is a torus, that is to say a round donut that you wrap things around. However, in practice, it's difficult to wrap that, and in practice, it's very difficult to draw. But toroidal transformers are uh, excellent and uh, very compact, and they do a very good job. Okay, I think you understand the principle. Uh, my advice to you is to find the turns ratio first, because that's based on... Um, actual physical wrapping you know it's based on the device itself uh, then to find the voltage on the primary and to use the transformer equation to find the voltage on the secondary and then later go back and use the inverse of the turns ratio uh, to find some currents that's my recommendation on how to proceed when solving problems involving transformers. Hey, thanks for your attention.